Among other things, you'll find that you're not the first person who was ever confused and frightened, even sickened by human behavior. You're by no means alone on that score. You'll be excited and stimulated to know many, many men have been just as troubled morally and spiritually as you are right now. Happily, some of them keep records of their troubles. You'll learn from them if you want to. Just as someday, if you have something to offer, someone will learn something from you. It's a beautiful reciprocal arrangement. And it is an education. It's history. It's poetry. Anyway, I keep picturing all these little kids playing some game in this big field of rye. Thousands of little kids and nobody's around. Nobody big, I mean, except me. And I'm standing on the edge of some crazy cliff. What I have to do, I have to catch everybody if they start to go over that cliff. I mean, if they're running and they don't look where they're going, I have to come from out of nowhere and catch them. That's all I do all day. I just be the catcher in the rye and all. I know it's crazy, but that's the only thing I'd really like to be. J.D. Salling, the catcher in the rock. 1950s. It's power in that stuff, right? Power in that. Power in the words, you know. A lot of a lot of good people have read that and were inspired by it. A lot of crazies were inspired by it. But what does it really mean? Well, to me, it means. It means staying in there, staying out, staying out in the field and, you know, aspiring to be that. <laughs> Something like that. So, I just want to do a review today, a little muse, walkie-talkie. <laughs> Down here in my favorite park, Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Like any other park in the country, you know, nothing special. No big thing. Yeah. So it was an interesting week. I think um, today we'll probably hear. I guess we'll start there with the Kavanaugh hearing. I'm going to back up. 2016. See, this, this mess, this dilemma, started for a lot of people in 2016. It was, a, it was a, like a fork in the road, you know? There's a fork in the road where people people were, were inspired and they still believed a little bit in the system. They, they believed enough in the system, in the electoral system, that there was still hope for fairness. And in 2016 we saw a complete collapse of that. And not just on the, on the, on the left, but where I was at the time, but also on the right. And that's even the bigger betrayal, and I'll tell you why. How those folks have been totally betrayed by a system that fails them. Right? So, in 2016, we had this, this enormous uprising on the left, where people realized that corporate tyranny was at the root of the problem of why there was this vast income and wealth inequality. Why so few had so much and the 99% has so little. Right? And this crowd of thinkers stood up and, and, and fought back. And it, it also stemmed out of 2008, 2009, the Occupy Wall Street movement. Right? And then what happened? We saw a fake election. We saw uh, election rigging. We saw money laundering in the, in, the, in the party that we had invested in. Democratic Party. Some brave soul 
got a hold of the emails, Podesta's emails, and threw them out. Threw the truth out where everybody could see it. Inescapable. And then we saw the criminals turn it into Russia. Right? They got caught. So they, they found an enemy and they blamed somebody. Blamed Russia. Lucifer. The Russians. <laughs> they dropped the whole ISIS. <laughs> Went right for Russia. <laughs> Surprised they didn't say ISIS did it. Yeah. Alright, so... And, all, and that's where we, that's, that's been the narrative now for two years. That... That there's a party who refuses to admit defeat, admit fraud, abuse, that they don't answer to the people anymore, that they answer to the money, interest, the donors. And at that time, we had two frames, two schools of thought, which is what I wanted to, I talked about, I think I talked about it yesterday, with this uh, Mr. Pac-Man. Right? And, uh, but there's more, there's Kalinsky, there's Chenk Uger, you know. And I, I don't, I, I don't, I, yesterday I may have, you know, blew a fuse, but the fact is I don't want to say it in a condescending way. I want to say it in a way that sometimes we're just fucking wrong, right? But sometimes we invest in a certain idea and we're wrong and we have to admit it, right? Not double down on the lie. Right? Because that's what the Democrats did. They doubled down on the lie, and they thought that they had a, they had a winning. That they had a winning strategy in lying, Russia, or. Or just hate Trump, or, most women hate men. Or some other twisted version of a, a a uh, political, <laughs> strategy. It's not really what it is. But I got to tell you, you guys are doing the same thing now because the 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 left that that cheated you, and you thought that you could reform, you're now seeing that you can't reform it, right? You can't do it because you're going after the wrong players. You're going after the politicians who take the money. You're going after the 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 uh, the middlemen. You're not going after. You never. You didn't go after the the, the money. Which is, you know, maybe 10 banks that run this economy, run co economies all, all abroad. Well, look what they're doing in Sweden. They're sinking. They took away Sweden's right to choose. They took a right to speak. They took away you know, Venezuela. They love to bash Venezuela. Destabilize Venezuela and then say socialism. See, it doesn't work. <laughs> this is who you guys are invested in, the banks. But meanwhile, you're pointing in, uh, the finger at the brave souls that speak up, right? You're attacking the people that, that left you behind, right? Jimmy Dore's camp. The camp of, we're not going to tolerate this shit. You, you, you know, you, you, you screw me once, that's, <laughs> that's your fault. You screw me twice, that's my fault, right? We're out of here, right? And now you're lashing out. Now the now that left that invested in the Democratic Party realize realizes that they're totally screwed and they were totally deceived even when we told you so. Right? It's circling back to blame. You're doing the same thing that the corrupt Democrats do. Democrats blame the voters for not siding with their corruption. <laughs> Right? Hillary Clinton, the fucking most corrupt politician in the world. Right? You didn't side with her, so you're you're bad. You're a bad guy, right? It's crazy. It's a cra it's crazy. And now you're doing it to the to the people that told you so. Right? We told you all along that the the elections are rigged. You know it too. But you take that little bit of hope. They say, ah, you know, maybe Russia did it. The gaslighting starts to kick in. Ah, you know, maybe. Hey, you know, maybe, yeah, some, maybe Russia. Oh, we'll use that to get Trump. That's what you did. You're doing, you became what they, you became them. You're just like them. You're a pig at the table, just like them. Do you see what I'm talking about? 
But you see what I'm talking about? Now on the right, same thing, right? You guys invested in InfoWars. Oh, fucking Alex Jones, right? The, the great savior. What happened to Alex Jones? Have you looked up lately what happened to him? I thought Trump, I thought he was Trump's right-hand guy. I thought he was the voice of Trump. And, and now what happens? I threw him under the bus too. Right? He was invested in that Trump idea. Him and, you know, the other, those other guys. I don't know what their names are. <laughs> I don't care. Right? They're all invested in Trump. He's going to make America great again. So he's going to build a wall, going to get rid of the Mexicans. Because they're raping our children and they're raping our mothers and are taking our jobs. I'm gonna build a wall. That'll work. So, and now you've, you you realize that you're realizing that that there is no savior in 2018. Two years later, there is no savior. See, that's where we 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 come from. That's why I just want to give historical perspective on where we are now facing a midterm election it's nothing new there's nothing nothing spectacular it's business as usual the oligarchy already won but they already won there's not, not going to be any surprises there maybe a little tilt left or a tilt right that's nothing there's no overturn they'll just if it tilts left they'll take the money and give it to the left and get the same result you see how it works if it tilts right, they'll keep the money where it is. It's just a it's just a poker game for rich people. It's not it has nothing to do with increasing benefits or or increasing the the voice and the livelihood of the American people who it's supposed to. It suits a very small group of people, an oligarchy, a, a small uh, one percent donor class. And the Kavanaugh hearings. Ooh, the big Kavanaugh hearings. The big Supreme Court hearing. See, Democrats on the left. This is your chickens coming home to roost. That's what this is. See, we told you that this would happen. What did you get? You got a judge, a corporatist. Should he be confirmed? Yeah. He played by all the rules. The president picked him. Senate, the Senate is about to confirm him. What's the problem? It's, that's America. But you tried to, you cheated, and you lied and you stole from the from the electorate, and then they threw you under the bus, and you and you and it was nowhere to hide. And then you tried to blame them. You're trying to blame them for that. It's your fault Kavanaugh is getting uh, confirmed. What do you got? You got, a, you got a, he calls himself a conservative appellate judge. Right? I don't know. I think he's just, a, he's just another corporatist. He's not, there's not going to be any, any difference whatsoever in terms of Supreme Court decisions. It's going in that direction and it always has. See, the corporate part of it is way more powerful than any social issues, like, you know, a woman's right to choose what happens to her vagina, or <laughs> who can marry who. None of that's going to change. It's stupid to think it's going to change. So November 6th, you know, we have these, the big midterm election. Oh, big change is coming, right? Big change is coming. It's on the horizon. Watch out. Here we go, 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 go. Oh, fucking. Uh, and it leads into 2020. Ah, two years away. Oh, it's going to be good, right? We got all this time to figure everything out. We're going to figure it out. Got it all figured out. It's going to happen in 2020. Yeah. Can Trump be beat? I don't think so. 
Do we want to beat Trump? I don't know. I don't think so. I think we want to beat House and Senate. That if we can, if we can educate people that their lives the problem, that their lives the lever of power. You've got a friend in Trump, right? You do. You say universal health care, and people are screaming, and, and everybody wants it, and you got a Senate in the House that's ready to pass it. No problem with Trump. Right? You want to tax corporations, bring them down, make them give give the money back to the people. <laughs> you got no problem with Trump. You want to build a wall? Got no problem with Trump, right? I, he's not an ideologue. He's 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 he has no opinion. So why do you want to get rid of him? Why do you think that that's the root of the problem? It's not. You're you're, you're miles better off with a guy like that than a than a a, a corrupt crooked Hillary Clinton or anybody else like her because anybody that comes out of the, the democratic school is going to be that or they wouldn't be endorsed they wouldn't have gotten that far that they're fully totally and completely in the pocket of the democratic party and their donors believe that so why why do we care about why why is why is Trump I mean, I've done my own research and poked around and asked people, and you get this this visceral attack that somehow Trump represents all. Trump is the racist white man who's going to take away my 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 you know right to choose, and and he's going to take away my job, and he wants to put me back into slavery, and I'm gay, and he wants to put me back in the closet, and I just don't see it. I don't I just don't see it I, I don't I don't get it I don't I mean it's it's laughable that you've been led to believe that that's the that's the problem and that's who the, the commander-in-chief is that's a shame so in 2018 rather than focus on the shit show of the presidency who's gonna be president right if a, if a rising star comes up that challenges Trump in some way, challenges Trump from the people's perspective, then so be it. But if not, it doesn't mean anything. The real show, the real power grab is 535, Senate and House. And in November, we're going to see... It's already too late, I mean... It's already too late for that one. But like I said, the, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. Is there hope? Is there a possibility of taking back our country? Taxing the wealthy, bringing them back down to size? Making them give, making them give back that money that they stole? The millions and trillions of dollars that is stashed offshore to give it back to the people? Is there still hope? Yeah. Yeah. Of course there is. Of course there is. But we have to wake up. We have to wake up our citizen citizenry, citizenry, citizenry. Got to wake up. Got to wake people up. The sleepy masses. Sleepy masses. So today in history, a Supreme Court judge will be confirmed, and rightfully so. Because they tried to witch hunt on him and it didn't work. And in, in a small, it's a small victory for justice. But it's a tragedy for the American people. Because he's not for you. He's for them. Right? Thank you so much for watching. My name is Marcus Conti. Party on.